in the countryside of the Scottish borders today, near the English border, just outside Jedburgh, looking for a series of old ruined churches that I found on the map. But what is it that connects all these old churches? The first one I found here is at South Dean. Your dates back from the 11th century. A parish in those days which probably had hundreds of people. But now it's just a farm. But South Dean is in no way the only church in the area. Let's see what others we can find. This amazing little hidden gem. The ruins of Chester Kirk. Just round the corner from South Dean where we were. Churches at Chester's here and South Dean are connected, but they're not the only churches in the area, there are more. last church that I'm on the trail of today. And here I am at the last of the three abandoned, ruined churches that I was looking for today near Jedburgh. This one is Abbot Rule, a parish which once had more than 300 people, almost 300 people attending this church. Now, it's nothing, absolutely nothing, probably the most forgotten and isolated of all the three. What is it that connects these three churches, apart from geography? Well, it's the fact that all these three churches came under the control of Jedburgh Abbey. Jedburgh Abbey, the centre of ecclesiastical life in the Scottish borders, or the southern Scottish borders in the early 1200s. Jedburgh ruled over religious life in the Scottish borders for centuries. But Jedburgh and the site of Jedburgh Abbey have been important religious places for a long time, and a long time even before the monks of the Augustine order created Jedburgh Abbey in 1153. But why is that? And that's what I want to find out today. So let's go to Jedburgh now and have a look around.
this structure is probably the most complete of the border abbeys and really does give you that immense size of scale and importance of the place. The site of Jedburgh Abbey was an extremely important place long before the arrival of the Augustine monks in 1153. We know this from a few clues, but the main one are these. All around the precinct of Jedburgh Abbey, there's almost 15 of these elaborate crosses built. These crosses were everywhere in Scotland. They marked your arrival into the territory of an abbey or a monastery or a priory. Most of them had one or two, but Jedburgh had 15. 15? Why? What was so important up there? Within the abbey here, there are stones which have been plundered from an even earlier age, the Roman occupation. There's a large lintel stone in here with a Roman inscription on it, which has clearly been plundered from a Roman site close to Jedburgh. Nobody knows where it came from, exactly. There are some incredibly important people from the 12th and 13th centuries who were buried here in Jedbrami. But there's somebody who was buried here far earlier than that and is far more important than that and that's what I want to try and find out. Tombs to the Kerr family, important men who survived at the time of the Border for 1600s and such like, and, and later. But somebody was buried in Jedburgh Abbey before it became Jedburgh Abbey. And that is why this site was such a religious, important place. The real reason I came to Jedburgh Abbey today, because this was the shrine and grave to a saint. This was why Jedburgh Abbey site was so important. But whose grave was it? Some people reckon it could have been St Boswell from Melrose Abbey. Even he was not important enough to receive this form of decoration. So who, who could it have been?
only a lie explanation and somebody important enough to have commanded this form of worship and pilgrimage would have been sent Cuthbert himself buried here before his move to Durham. Oh, boy.